Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so this is uh, another note sheet here, just a little bit more review on the vector applications. Okay, so let's get started. 200 pound force makes an angle of 55 degrees with the second force. The result of the two forces makes an angle of 15 degrees with the second force. Find the magnitudes of the second force and of the resultant force. So if you guys remember, this is just drawing a nice little friendly parallelogram here. Right, so it's the 200 pound force, and this is 55 degrees, and let's just draw a resultant force here then. And it says the resultant of two forces makes it 15, so that's our first force, and this is the second force, right, this is 15 degrees here. Okay, and then it says find the magnitude, so we'll just call this X and this guy Y. Alright, so um, we just need to know our properties of parallelograms. Well, first of all, that's 200, so let's even change colors here a little bit. So you guys agree this is 200 over here. Um, that's 15 degrees, and well, actually this is 55 degrees here, so remember... Um, consecutive angles of a parallelogram are supplementary, so this angle right here is going to be 180 minus that 55 degrees, which is 125 degrees. Okay, and if that's 15 degrees and that's 125 degrees, then it's this angle right here is going to be 180 minus 125 minus 15, which gives me 40 degrees. Sweet. So that pretty much gives us every angle that we need. And uh, then, of course, we can just use, let's draw a nice little friendly picture here again. Uh, like that. And this is going to be 15 degrees. This is going to be 40. And this is going to be 125. And... The side here is 200, X and Y. Okay, and then obviously what are we going to use here? We're going to use a lot of signs. It makes sense to use a lot of signs, right? Because we have an opposite angle. I have that 15 degree and that 200. So let's do that. We have uh, 200 over sine of 15 degrees is equal to uh, Y over sine of 40 degrees. Okay, so I do by cross multiplying and solve, and I get y equals uh, 496.7 pounds. Okay, so this is my second force. Okay, and then the other one is just 200 over sine of 15 degrees. Use the same thing here, and that's going to be x over sine of 125. Okay, cross multiply and solve. We get x equals 633.0 pounds. And that's our resultant force. Okay, pretty easy, right? Just remember properties of parallelograms and you're good to go. Okay, uh, next guy. Uh, you're pushing up. Are you pushing a 5,000 pound truck up a hill with a 6 degree slope? How much force is required to move the truck? Sweet. So this is, again, a pretty mellow problem here, math fans. Okay, it's just a nice little right triangle. Ah, right triangle. And, you know, again, just draw a nice good picture here. And this picture gives you your weight of 5,000 pounds. And this angle here is 6 degrees. So what you're trying to do is you're looking for this force. I'm going to draw it actually right on the triangle because it's going to make it easier when you actually draw the picture. And do you guys agree that this force, we'll call it F, do you guys agree I can move that force anywhere I want? That's the beauty of a vector, right? As long as I keep the same magnitude in the same direction, I can move it anywhere I want. So watch. Oh, I'm going to move it right here. Man, that is so exciting. All right, so there's my vector, and then I can just draw continue drawing my, my uh, picture here and just kind of remember some of the properties here basically we're just we have similar triangles right 
I mean, this is a right angle here. So if that's 6 degrees, that's 84 degrees here. And you guys know, let me put this in a different color here, right? This is a right angle right here, right? So that means this set, that 6 degrees is also this 6 degrees there. So, and this, of course, is a right triangle here. So it's kind of nice. I mean, I basically have right triangle trig. And I know some of you guys are saying, well, can't I use law of sines? Well, sure, you can use law of sines. You have that 5,000, you have that opposite angle, and you have that 6 degree, and you're looking for this F here. Okay, that's great. Or just use old right triangle trig, right? In this case here, can't I just use um, sine, right? I could say sine of 6 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. So either one, law of sines or right triangle trig is good. And then I cross multiply and I get F equals 5,000 times sine of 6, which is 522.6 pounds. And just think logically, math fans. I mean, if you messed, messed up here and did something goofy and something like over 5,000 pounds or maybe 2 pounds, I mean, think logically. That's a 5,000 pound truck is pretty big truck right, and you're pushing up a six degree slope, it's still going to weigh a lot. I mean, it's certainly not the full weight of the truck, obviously, but it's still going to weigh a lot. Certainly not more than the weight. Nothing to be more than the weight of the truck unless the truck's actually driving towards you, and then you're going to get crushed anyway, so that would be very sad. All right, so kind of think logically what makes sense. All right, next problem. A plane flies 500 miles an hour on a bearing of 215 degrees. Oh, bearing. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so 500 miles per hour at 215 degrees. So let's draw our nice little dotted line here. Um, 215 degrees is like about that. Okay, and that's 500 miles per hour. And it says a 30 mile an hour wind from, and this is underlined, from the direction of 270. So remember, draw your dotted line by that the tip of the arrow because it's hitting the course or the front of the plane, right? And it's from a direction of 270. So you guys agree that 270 is going all the way around here, and it's this way. Now the deal is, how do you draw the arrow? Well, it's from 270. So that means I go to 270, which is to the left. I come from that direction. That means I'm going to the right. Do you guys agree with that? Right, and again, if you're ever confused, throw the word north in there. If I'm coming from the north, am I going to the north? No. If I'm coming from the north, I'm going south. Okay, Santa Claus comes, or non-denominational holiday man, comes from the north. That means he always comes from the North Pole. He's coming south. Okay, so kind of put that in... Uh, if you, know, if you use north in there, I think it really helps out a little bit. Anyway, it's coming from 270. Well, this picture the way I drew it, please do not draw a triangle this way because this is, uh, we have two arrows pointing together. Okay, this is tip to tip. Can't do that. All right? And just think logically. If that wind is blowing from the left and it's blowing, isn't it blowing the plane more to the right? So really what I want to do is I want to redraw that arrow or that vector like that. Okay, so now it's, it's actually tip to tail, right? So I can draw my vector. This is my new vector, which makes sense. What's going on here? It's blowing the plane to the right. That's what the wind is doing, okay? All right, so um, let me label this too. I didn't label this. Uh, the wind is uh, 30 mile an hour, so this is 30. So I have 500, I have that 30 there. Remember, I'm trying to come up with this angle right here, the angle between uh, the two magnitudes, all right? And I'm going to use that 215 once, 215 degrees, and I'm going to use that, um, I didn't label this either, uh, this is 270 degrees. I'm going to use this once, somehow to figure out that angle. Well, let's use the 215 degrees first, because I think that's actually the best angle to use. Um, and do you guys agree, if that's 215 degrees, remember I told you, always look for alternate interior, uh, supplementary, same side interior, um, just supplementary angles, straight angles, right? There's a, a few things just to always look for. Well, do you understand this is 215 degrees? Um, 
do you guys agree then I can actually say that this angle right here that's just 215 minus 180 right which is 35 degrees so that angle is 35 degrees which oh sweet sweet look at that angle right those angles are congruent that's also 35 degrees right because what are they they're, they're first of all it's the same transversal they're parallel lines the um, the bearing lines and so those are alternate interior angles all right so all right that's cool that's uh, 35 degrees and um, do you guys agree that I can figure out and there's a lot of ways to look at this problem but here let me draw it in another color again uh, do you guys agree that this angle right here uh, since that's 270 degrees going all the way around, that little part left over is going to be 360 minus 270, which is 90 degrees. So if I add the green together and the red together, so let's do that, it's going to be, I think it's gray. So this angle right here, the green and the red, is going to be uh, 90 plus 35 which is 125 degrees so that's 125 degrees and uh, this angle right the whole angle here right this makes a straight angle right here do you guys agree with that it's a straight angle let me put a different color here this is straight I mean it's almost I, I'm kind of drawing all these different colors here but if that's a straight angle if I subtract that gray part uh, I'll get the inside part you guys agree? I'll get this. Okay, so if I say 180 minus that, I get uh, 55 degrees. And that's our deal. That's what we're looking for. So let me redraw that picture again, just because it's kind of a nice thing to do so you can see what's going on. That's 55 degrees. And this is 500 miles an hour, and this is 30 miles an hour, and I'm looking for x. All right, that's our new vector, and that's actually our new ground speed, right? So it's pretty easy. We're just using law of cosines, okay, because we have side angle side. So we're going to say x squared equals 500 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 500 times 30 cosine of 55 degrees okay and we solve that guy and we get x equals 483.4 miles per hour okay cool cool um now let's find the resulting course so you see how it's going 215 degrees that wind is pushing it to the right so i'm looking for this angle right here that theta okay i just drew that in here right over here right looking for theta and that's gonna say how much it's changing its course okay so what do I use now you know to find theta um, well now since I have that X I can use law of, of sines because I have an opposite angle inside so we're gonna do X over sine of 55 degrees equals 30 over sine of theta oop and that X of course let me put that in here is 480 3.4 okay so we cross multiply we take the inverse sine and we get theta is equal to 2.9 degrees now the question is do we add or subtract that angle well think logically again if it's pushing it to the right do you guys agree it's going from 215 degrees that means it's it's going to be less than an, less of an angle right this angle to here that's going to be less than 215 because it's pushing it. 215, 214, 213 is pushing it less. So you're going to say our theta is equal to uh, 215 minus 2.9 degrees. Okay. So our new resulting course is going to be 212.1 degrees. Okay. Not bad. But again, picture is like, picture is everything. It's like 90% of the work. I mean, obviously, if you get the picture wrong, that means you're... Uh, your problem's going to be wrong, so make sure you're good to go with that. Okay. Last problem here. Okay, a plane flies 500 miles an hour, bearing 65 degrees. A 30-mile-an-hour wind in the direction of 25 degrees blows against the plane. Find the resulting course in the ground speed of the plane. Same kind of problem. Okay, we're going to draw 
our nice bearing here. As soon as you see the word bearing, you better draw that bearing line. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right, it's huge. Okay. Didn't, don't mean to scare you guys here. So let's go. Here's it's about 65 degree bearing line. Um, and this is 500 miles an hour. And then a 30 mile an hour wind in the direction of 25 degrees blows against the plane. So, again, another bearing line. Draw it right at the tip of the plane. Okay, and it's in the direction of 25 miles an hour. So you guys agree that this is 25 miles an hour here? Or this is a 25 degree angle, and it's a 30 mile an hour wind. That's the picture, right? And so let's draw a result. And this is actually kind of nice because it's tip to tail already. I don't have to do anything. Now if it was a a uh, wind from a direction of 25 degrees, you would draw it the other way and you would have to do this then, right, to do tip to tail. Do you agree with that? And then you would draw your vector. Okay, but let me erase that because that's not the case here. All right, so this is what our resultant vector is then. It's this guy right here, okay. Kind of missed it a little bit, but that's our, our resultant vector. And so we just need to put some stuff together here. Do you guys agree that we're looking for this angle, right? We're looking for the angle really between those two vectors. Okay, and that's what we're going to do to using alternate interior angles and same side interior. And, you know, just to put all the angles together. Okay, so let's do that. Um, well, let's use a 65 degree angle first. Um, let's follow that transversal. So do you guys agree if this is 65 degrees here, what can I do with this angle right here? Because I'm kind of following along. Again, the parallel line and the same transversal. Well, aren't they same side interior? So isn't this angle going to be 180 minus 65 degrees? Okay. Which is um, going to be 115 degrees, right? And, well, oh, that's actually sweet. That's 25 degrees. I don't even have to do anything, right? It's just that's the angle there. So I'm just going to add 25 degrees. And I get 140 degrees. Wow, that's a pretty mellow problem. So here's my new my picture here, just quickly. Uh, this is 500, this is 30, and this is 140 degrees. And this is x. I'm looking for x. So um, using a lot of cosines again. So x squared equals 500 squared plus 30 squared minus 2 times 500 times 30 cosine of 140 degrees. Okay, you multiply all that out and you get x equals 523.3 miles per hour. Sweet! Okay, and then again, what's what angle are we looking for? Well, again, you are always always look at the angle of the plane. Right? So that's the angle of the plane right now, isn't it? It's a 65 degree bearing. And I want to know, hey, what's going on with that? What's what's it what's it doing? Well, isn't the red line um less than 65 degrees? Right? Let me use a different color here. Isn't this guy going to be some angle less than 65 degrees? Because the wind is pushing it like more to the left, if you want to look at it that way. So I need to find out this angle right here this theta. Okay? And of course we're going to use law of signs because now we have our x value and so we're going to say um, 523.3 over sine of uh, 140 equals uh, 30 over sine of theta. Okay? And we do our cross multiplying in for sine, we get theta equals 2.1 degrees. So remember what I said, you're going you're going less angle, less of an angle, right? 65 degrees, so I'm going less, so I'm going to subtract and then I'm going to do 65 minus 2.1. So my angle comes out to be 62.9 degrees. And that's my resulting course. Okay? So that's it. Uh, last two problems I think are actually the toughest just drawing that picture. The first two are really pretty easy. Parallelograms and you're just drawing a nice right triangle trig uh, problem there. Okay?
That's it, my fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.